Hi, this is Ray Curlick, answering some questions about what questions should I have if I'm looking to buy a piece of property. Out here in Fulcher, Fort Bend County, Wharton County, Matagorda County, or any of the other counties out here on the west side of Houston that we help serve. So the first and foremost question I would always ask is, what is my access to the property? So access can be granted in a number of different ways, uh, both by roadway, by public roadway, by private roadway, and by easement. And we'll talk a little bit more about easements later. But without access, uh, you've got uh, an island for a piece of property, and that will greatly affect uh, your ability to access your property. If you don't have a recorded dedicated easement for that property, recognize that in most situations, it will be difficult, if not impossible, for you to obtain or force uh, your neighbors to give you such an easement. You'll have to pay for it. The other issue, second issue that I would look at relates to boundaries and fences. So most people have a general assumption, including even me, that fences are meant to uh, show the boundaries of property lines. The fact of the matter is this isn't often the case. In fact, the older the property is and the older the fence is, the more likely that that fence is simply a matter of expedience. That is to say, what was the easiest way to get a fence generally across the edge of the property? It may or may not have anything to do with the boundary of the property. Um, again, these are situations that we handle just like on the access side by way of a survey. So we would hire a registered surveyor to go out to the property and take a look at the boundaries, the fences, and the access and investigate all those issues. Um, in many situations, a fence, if it's there for a long enough period of time, can actually become the property line. Um, and basically that can work to your advantage or it can work to your disadvantage, depending on um, which side of the fence your property uh, that you want to acquire would be. So that's again, something that you can ask the surveyor to address. Uh, again, recognize that simply because the boundary is in a different place than the fence doesn't mean you necessarily get uh, that uh, original boundary line. Another issue to be concerned about, especially when you're talking about property that's not within a subdivision of some sort is oil and gas rights and ingress and egress. And you'll see a lot, oftentimes when you're buying a, a piece of property, there's an addendum dealing with ingress and egress. And it'll ask you whether you wish to waive ingress and egress. Um, for the most part, um, these are decisions that you'll have to think about, right? So if you're purchasing the property, um, there are situations in which you can actually obtain the oil and gas rights along with the right of ingress and egress. What ingress and egress technically means is, can an oil company come onto my property and drill uh, a well or uh, more likely place uh, pipelines or equipment on my property in support of a well that may be on another piece of property that I am pooled with. Um, so one way to you know, make sure that you're not having to worry about that is to have the property owner that's selling you the property waive that right of ingress and egress and therefore the oil company has no right to come on your property. Likewise, you can obtain or acquire the oil and gas mineral interest yourself. So at least if they come on your property, you're getting something out of it. That is to say royalties. The next item to be thinking about is easements. Easements can come in a variety of fashions. One type of easement would be simply an easement to get to the property that affords the access that we talk about. Other types of uh, easements include utility easements. So those are things like uh, electric lines, water lines, cable, telephone lines, all those kinds of things typically require that a recorded easement be listed somewhere for someone to string something across your property. Same is true of pipelines. Now, pipelines are a little bit different and then they can be acquired not by agreement, but by what we call eminent domain. And if you have an interest or a concern about that, please watch some of our other videos by my partner, Phil Hundel, with regard to eminent domain. Finally, uh, the most important issue before uh, the time of the closing is gonna be title. And title basically just means who actually owns the property and in what percentages. For that purpose, typically uh, buyers are going to look into getting title insurance. And the purpose of title insurance is basically to 
have insurance against the risk that perhaps the person who's claiming they are selling you the property doesn't own 100% of the property. We can talk a little bit about the mechanics of title insurance, but generally speaking, title insurance is going to insure the value uh, of the property uh, that you're paying and that you are getting 100% of the surface rights. Not, there's nothing to do with oil and gas. Um, cost of closing. That's another thing to be thinking about. How much is the cost of closing going to be um, in terms of getting this transaction closed? Oftentimes that's gonna be dependent on things like this, the requirements for surveying, for uh, addressing boundary issues, addressing fencing issues, looking at oil and gas and easements and things like that, determining what items need to be cleared before you can uh, actually close on the property. An EMC is an earnest money contract, and most of us are familiar with that. It's a contract to purchase, and so that's the thing that we sign in the process of saying, I want to make an offer on this property. You sign an earnest money contract. The last two things, repairs required. Uh, if we have repairs required to the improvements, that is to say that buildings or houses on the property, or other issues related to damage to the property or uh, defects in the property that you want to have corrected prior to the closing, that's something that again we would address in earnest money contract. Typically it would be uh, a condition prior to closing that these issues be handled or settled. Finally, mortgage and financing. Mortgage and financing is the reality for most of us when we're buying property, we want to make sure that we are able to finance it. That's why things like uh, boundaries, fences, access, and of course as most of us are familiar, flood zone are all things that are going to be important. If we can't get it mortgaged or financed, um, then we're going to have a problem. Um, mortgage and financing, we can handle it. We'll probably be handling it on a future video. But generally speaking, uh, the bank or the mortgage company is going to require you to sign some additional documents that make it clear that if you don't pay your mortgage, they can foreclose on the property and take it back. Um, so these are all steps in the process and questions that need to be answered when you're looking at buying a piece of property, especially a rural piece of property. Thanks.